So if you're designing a Rails application, one thing that you may often forget to do is to change the error page. And this is something that's really simple to change and it can definitely go a long ways instead of just displaying this generic error page to an end user. It doesn't have the look and feel of your application and it's also not very informative of what the user should do now other than the browser back button. There's no way for the user to continue on to use your application. So instead, when a user gets an error, we want to display a custom error page. And here you can see that we're just using this template but it still gives us the look and feel of our normal application. But now we can actually show them something that's specific to this error. And so another thing I want to do is that whenever a user experiences an error, I want to be notified within Slack immediately of the error that the user got. So as you can see here, we have this notification that whenever a user gets an error 500, we then get pinged on Slack with the details of the error and then some of the relevant information as well as the backtrace. So just with this information alone, I can see very clearly where the error is and what we would need to do to fix it. And then we can put a hotfix in and the user wouldn't have the issue anymore. So while I'm testing this out, we'll first need to change our application in the development environment. So under the config environments development.rb, you'll have to change this config dot consider all requests local to false. And by changing this to false, we would mimic our production's error messages. Then under the config application.rb file, we can come in and then we want to add an additional config. And we're going to set config exceptions app self dot routes. And this means that we'll rely on the routes file within our application to point the user to what controller in action they should hit when they experience a certain error message. And then within our config routes.rb file, we can then add a match for any kind of 404, which is a page not found, or an error 500, which is a internal server error. So we can call match 404 to the errors not found via all. So whether it's a get request, put request, post request, if that page was not found, then the user would be redirected to the forward slash 404. If it's an internal server error, so if there's some backend logic that has generated an error, then we are matching error 500, and then we're mapping this to the controller errors, and then the action internal server error, and again, we are saying via all, which is again the get, put, post, etc. And then under the controllers, you can create a new file called errors controller, and then within here, we'll just create a class errors controller inherited from the application controller, and then we'll have two actions, not found and internal server error, and these should match our routes. And likewise, within the view errors folder, you would want to have a internal server error HTML ERB, as well as a not found HTML ERB. And then within here, you can add in your different styling for this error page. However, keep in mind that you want to make sure that this error page doesn't have any errors itself, otherwise some bad things would just happen. And if you don't want to use your standard applications layout, then under the errors controller, you are able to create a different layout and then it would be applicable for all of these errors. And if you do this, then also make sure that you go into your layouts folder under the views, and then you just create a copy of your application layout or something similar, and then you give it the appropriate name errors. And that should match the label that you have for your layouts here. However, this is a little bit outside the scope of this episode. So in our welcome abouts page, you'll see that I just added an ERB tag and this is an error. And this is not a variable or method that we have defined. So this would generate a error 500 when we push it to our production application. So now coming back to our home page, you can see that we can navigate to our home and our contact without any issues. However, if we go to this about page, you'll now see that we get our errors internal server error. And again, this is just the HTML view found in the app views errors internal server error.html.erb. So the last bit is to create a notifier in Slack whenever a user generates an error. So within our gem file, we'll add the gem Slack notifier. Be sure to run bundle and restart your Rails application. And then in our errors controller, I'm just going to set a few variables that we're getting from our request environment. So I'm setting the exception to the request environment action dispatch exception. 
And then our message, we're getting the exception dot message, and we're ensuring that it's a string. And then our source extract is the exception source extract, and then we're going to join it because it is an array, and we're just going to join it with a new line. And same for our backtrace, and we're just capturing the first 10 lines of the backtrace because typically it's going to give you enough information within the first 10 lines, and you may need to tweak this depending on your application. And again, this is an array, so we're just going to join it with a new line. And then we can create a background job called Slack Notify Job, and we'll make sure that we're performing this later, and then we will just pass in these options. And the reason why I want to create a background job for this is because if the API is having some kind of issue, then I want to make sure that the end user is not being affected by this and that any kind of external service request is going into a background job. And then we can also tidy this up just in case if we are getting some kind of weird error. And then instead of doing a rescue, I want to ensure that we are sending back the message, the status 500. And you may be tempted to use head internal server error, but keep in mind if you do this, then you won't get your custom rendered status page, and instead you'll get an error message like this where it's the browser error page, and you'll get the error 500. And then within your terminal, you can call rails generate job slack notify, and this will create your app job slack notify job.rb. And then within here, within the perform, I'll pass in the three variables that we're getting from our errors controller. And then we construct this message string. And this string, notice that we have the asterisk and that's going to bold something. And then we can pass in a new line for each one of these. And then for something like the error, I'm using three backticks. And that's going to put whatever we have within there as a code block. And then I'm doing the same for the source and the backtrace. We can then make our link to the Slack notifier. And I'm just going to create a variable notifier. And this is just creating a new instance of the Slack notifier. We need to pass in our webhook URL into here, and I'm just going to create a Rails secrets called Slack URL, and that's how we're going to post it. And then we can actually create the notifier ping, which is going to send out that message. So we have our notifier ping, we have our message, and then I'm going to just spoof a username, and in this case, I'm just calling it 091 error. And then within the channel, and I'm just going to post it to the general channel. And you can post this to private channels as well. So within the Slack channel, I'm going to go up to the gear. And then I'm going to add an app. And then I'm going to go to manage at the top. Then on the custom integrations, I've added an incoming webhook. And this is where you'll want to create that integration. You would just click add configuration. And in my case, I've created one here. But the main thing that we want to grab is this webhook URL. And this webhook URL is going to be what we are going to put into our application secrets so that our notifier would be able to pick it up. And you can also customize the image so whenever the notifier pings through the webhook URL, it'll just use this little emoji. So then within our secret site YAML file, I'll create a Slack URL key. Then I'll just paste in the Slack URL that we got from the application. So let's test it out now. So if we're on the home and our contact page, those work just fine and it never posts. However, if we go to our about page, you see that it instantly creates the error message. And we can then see that this undefined local variable is within our help page. And then we can look at our backtrace to kind of trace back to see where the error actually was. And in this case, it was in our welcome about HTML.erb in line three. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, Check out driftandruby.com.